Hello again. My name is David Shaw, and if you're taking this course in sequence, this overview is part two, after the introduction, of how to implement a cloud center of excellence. If you need more in-depth information than we can present in video, please see the full online course at cloudgovcode.com slash programs. A cloud center of excellence brings together different parts of the IT department. In this section, you will cover how to form the core team, developing a charter for the Cloud Center of Excellence, creating the organization, the role of executive sponsors in the Center of Excellence, and the importance of leadership support. A core team for a Center of Excellence should be small, maybe around 10 people, multidisciplinary but integrated, empowered to make decisions on their own, agile in nature, but not necessarily agile, as we mean by software methodologies, technically minded, engaged with the work, and very hands-on. Here is a suggested composition for the team. Of course, you need a lead responsible for managing the cloud team. Then there would be a cloud architect, responsible for cloud architectures, typically consisting of a front-end platform, back-end platforms, a network, and a cloud-based content delivery to provide high availability. The cloud engineer is responsible for designing, templating, and building the actual cloud solutions. A site reliability engineer. Well, site reliability engineering was born at Google in 2003, prior to the DevOps movement. It's responsible for making solutions more reliable, efficient, and scalable through infrastructure automation, monitoring, performance, capacity planning, and disaster response. A network engineer is responsible for VPC network and subnet design in cloud solutions. The security engineer is responsible for security by design and privacy by design best practices and vulnerability testing. A technical engineer is responsible for developing standard automated software pipelines using, for example, Ansible, Puppet, or Terraform for continuous integration and continuous delivery, layered testing, system configuration, maintenance, and developing preventative maintenance plans. Organization Change and Communications is responsible for evangelizing the uh, Center of Excellence and training developers to support scaling the center. A cloud center of excellence helps bring together different parts of the IT department. A cloud engineering team has the essential engineering skills to build cloud applications. The cloud team is responsible for operational aspects of cloud performance management, including platform processes and operations financial management, including chargeback, and some aspects of vendor management. A cloud services broker is responsible for cloud governance, service level management, cloud selection and usage, vendor selection and management, identity management, and continuous improvement. Supporting services are responsible for providing foundational services to support cloud projects and to provide the support of subject matter experts, such as in the areas of privacy, security, legal, risk management, and finance. A DevSecOps engineering team allows continuous integration and delivery to be implemented in a controlled way with common standards and processes. This team is responsible for developing automated pipelines for projects and business units. The pipeline becomes an agent to enforce standards and best practices. The goal of the DevSecOps engineering team is to foster pockets of contagious excellence. Cultural change cannot be imposed on an organization. It has to grow organically. This can be done most easily through projects, which anyway are agents of change in themselves. These projects can move the organization in the direction it wants to go. To implement DevSecOps, 
Developers should be assigned for terms in the security group to learn about security risks and practices. The climate to make this possible is established by managers who create psychologically safe work environments. This means eradicating fear, accepting risks and failure. A cloud center of excellence should have a charter, project definition, or project statement describing its scope, purpose, objectives, participants and their responsibilities. Executive sponsors should sign the charter to signify they accept their responsibility and they will adhere to the charter. The charter should cover the mission, purpose, goals and scope of the center. It should describe stakeholders and members by title and their key roles and responsibilities. Operating guidelines or terms of reference are essential to show how roles and responsibilities are executed. Work streams such as networking, CICD and software defined infrastructure can explain the scope in more detail. Finally, define the metrics that will be used to evangelize success. Executive sponsors of the Cloud Center of Excellence can be represented in a steering committee. They should be visionary with a clear idea of where the organization needs to go to achieve digital transformation. They are instrumental to align the center with the organization's business strategy. They are champions to secure funding for the center and cloud initiatives. The executive sponsors should communicate weekly with business and project teams, champion the center's best practices across the organization, and participate actively in cloud deployments. Executive and management support are vital to achieve the goals of the Center of Excellence. These include governance, including management and allocation of resources, as well as coordination across multiple divisions. Guidance for the types of standards, methodologies, and tools used for the Center of Excellence. Shared learning, which includes training, skill assessments, and team building. And finally, metrics demonstrating the value provided by the center. It is important that the technology leadership delivers a clear message to the rest of the organization about the challenges the organization is facing and what the plan of action is to address these challenges. Le leadership teams should not miss any opportunity to talk about the center's work. While you absolutely need to have a grassroots adoption for a new technology, a clear vision and message delivered from leadership is equally needed. Internal blogs, dashboards, success stories, and town hall style meetings can strengthen the message across the entire organization. This is the end of the module on forming the cloud core team which should be with around 10 multidisciplinary people. After that, create the organization to support multiple DevOps teams. Develop a charter to provide purpose, scope, and responsibilities. Implement a steering committee of executive sponsors and develop broad leadership support across the organization. If you're following this series in sequence, the next module is about how to operationalize the Cloud Center of Excellence.